When you're ready to export a video project from Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, there are lots of options and settings that you have available to you. We're going to cover the most important settings you need to make sure are right when you're exporting your video and show you some tips in both Final Cut and Adobe Premiere. Let's start with Final Cut. When you're ready to export a project from Final Cut, click the Share button in the top right corner. There might be some presets here available to you, but let's click Add Destination. You'll see several options here for how to export a video file, but the most flexible and most common is Export File. So I'm going to drag that into the left-hand column and click Export File. Under Format, you can actually choose to export the audio only, video only, or video and audio. Most commonly, you're probably going to export both. And for publishing, there are some presets for things like Apple devices or web hosting, but we're going to choose our own export settings. So choose Video and Audio. For Video Codec, the most common codec here is H.264. H.264 preserves lots of the quality of your video, but makes the file a smaller size, so it's able to be uploaded to a cloud service. If you recorded high quality video like 10-bit 422 and you need to share that with someone in that uncompressed format, you can choose that. And then Apple ProRes is Apple's codec for high quality video encoding, but you get much larger file sizes. A quick note, if you're trying to export a lower third or a title from Final Cut to overlay on other videos in the future, choose Apple ProRes 444, and that will preserve the transparency. So you can use that video file and overlay it in another project. Let's choose H.264 again as the most common, and that's really the only settings you get here in Final Cut. You can choose whether or not to include chapter markers and open the video file in QuickTime once it's finished exporting. But that's about all you get for video and audio exporting. If you'd like to export the audio only, maybe because you do a video podcast and you also have an audio portion, you can choose Format Audio Only, and then in Under Audio Format, MP3 will be the most common way to upload for a podcast, but you can export an uncompressed wave if you need the full quality to edit more in another application. But you can also use Apple's secondary program called Compressor. Compressor is a $50 application you can get directly from Apple in the App Store, and it provides a lot more flexibility when you're exporting your video files. To send a video project to Compressor, I'm going to select the project here in my browser, and then go to File, Send to Compressor, New Batch. That will open the project here in the Compressor window. There's my project, and now it's waiting either for a video preset or for me to add some video settings here on export. Again, Compressor has lots of pre-made formats like audio formats and MP3 and WAV, also podcasting and video formats, but let's create our own custom export. I'm going to hit the plus button here in the bottom left corner and choose New Setting. Under the format, let's choose MPEG-4. An MP4 file is the most common video format to share with other people if you want to upload it to YouTube. So by default, I would choose MPEG-4. Other unique use cases might be MPEG-2. If you're just dealing with Apple devices, you can choose QuickTime Movie. And if you're doing a really high quality film or documentary, you can choose Dolby Digital if you have surround sound or Dolby Atmos built into your project. But again, most commonly we're going to be using MPEG-4 formats, and you can title this preset, and then we get ready to jump into the settings. Once the preset is created, I can adjust the settings here in the right-hand column. This is just the name of the preset and description, You'll see the file extension is MP4, which is what we want. You can also choose a default location to save any project using this preset if you have a specific folder. And I'm going to leave this box checked for optimized for network use. Under the retiming section, you can actually adjust the frame rate of a video file, but you probably want to leave that just on default unless you're really familiar with frame rates and how you want to adjust that from your original project. If you have captions attached to your project, you can check this box, otherwise you can leave it blank. And we're going to leave these set as they are. Now going over to the Video tab, you'll see this is where you have a majority of your video quality, resolution, and frame rate settings. By default, Compressor will leave everything as automatic. That means it will look at your original project, and whatever the resolution and frame rate is, it will pull those into this preset. But you can also choose to force a resolution. Let's say you always want this preset to default to 1080p high definition. Well, you can choose 1920 by 1080 then any video project using this preset will be downscaled to 1080. Compressor also has some vertical settings, so if you're making projects for Reels or TikTok, you can have a compressor preset set up just for that. But we can also just leave it on automatic. Frame rate, you can also force a specific frame rate. You can also just leave frame rate on automatic, and it will just pull the frame rate from your original project. And you can even apply camera LUTs right here in Compressor on export. We have a whole video on color grading and LUTs. You can check that link above. For codec, you do have the option of H.264 or HEVC. HEVC is also known as H.265. It's a newer codec than H.264. It does give you a little bit higher quality for a smaller video size, but its compatibility is not super widespread. So unless you're familiar with H.265 and where you're going to deliver your video, 
I would default to H.264 for compatibility. I will leave profile as high for high video quality, and you can leave these next settings as default. Now the data rate is where you're really going to adjust the quality of your video. As you can see for web publishing, we only have a thousand kilobytes per second. That's actually a fairly low bit rate, and it's not gonna get great quality video from our exports. We actually wanna raise that bit rate. Using one of the settings here, you can choose computer playback, and you'll see it goes up to 1500, or you can even do a custom bit rate. I actually like to preserve a lot of quality in my videos. It does make for slightly larger file sizes, but if I have the upload speeds to do it and I can wait on YouTube processing it, I like going pretty high. I'm actually gonna choose 15,000 kilobytes per second, which gives me a high quality video. My file size, depending how long yours is, is gonna be several gigabytes. But again, I like to preserve that quality, even uploading it to something like YouTube. You can check the multipass box that will increase the amount of time it requires to render, but will remove more artifacting and you will get slightly better quality that way. And we're gonna leave all these settings as they are. You can choose to even crop your video if you like to do that or add padding around the video. You can do that all on export. And we'll jump over to the audio tab briefly. Channel layout, you probably wanna leave as automatic where compressor will look to see what the project was and match that. Sample rate, you can either force 48 kilohertz or you can leave it as automatic and it will tell you what it's going to do for this preset. Format, you'll wanna leave on AAC unless you're familiar with the other formats and have a reason to change that. Audio quality, high is still a very good quality, but you can go all the way up to maximum if you'd like. Just like bitrate for video can change the quality of the video, bitrate for audio does the same. The higher the bitrate, the better the quality. If you're exporting something like a music video and you really wanna have the highest quality audio possible, choose the highest bitrate, and that's 320 kilobytes per second. If you're just doing a narration or talking in your video like this, you can choose something a little lower, even like 192 or 160, and you'll still get good quality audio. You can even add some audio effects here on export, but I usually like to add these in the project so I can preview it in my video editor rather than doing it on export. Now that I'm done creating my preset, I can drag it right onto the project here in the middle part of the window, and you'll see it's ready to export. This small yellow triangle is telling me there's an error, meaning I already have a project with this name, so usually I'll put a version number after it and you'll see that error goes away. The nice thing about using something like Compressor and Adobe Media Encoder is you can export multiple formats all at once, meaning your computer will just run through all the different exports, create all the different files for you, and you don't have to keep exporting individually. If I wanted to make an audio-only version of this project as well, I can go up to Audio Formats, choose something like MP3, drag it on top of the project, and now this will also create another MP3 file from the same project. I don't have to export multiple times, it'll create all these individual files after I hit Start Batch. Speaking of which, when you're ready to export all these files, click Start Batch. And now you'll see all the active projects in the compressor window. You can keep track of how long they're going to take. Again, depending on your computer power and how long these projects are, whether or not they're 4K, your render time can vary widely from minutes to even hours. So keep an eye on the progress, be patient, and try not to pause or cancel them because you will lose that progress and have to start from the beginning if something happens to this process. Then those files will be saved in the folders that you predetermined in the presets or that you chose in the compressor window. Now let's look at exporting a video file in Adobe Premiere. Here in Adobe Premiere, I have an open project file and in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the option to export this video file. There are some limited presets available right in Premiere. And if I click this preset, you'll see match source and high, medium, or low bit rate, and I can force high quality 4K, 1080, or lower. Choosing a match source option means that Adobe Premiere is gonna match the resolution, whether that's 1080p or 4K, the frame rate, and the other settings already built into the project. It's not gonna change anything on you, it's just gonna export a file according to whether high, medium, or low bit rate. Remember, bit rate means quality of video and audio. The higher the bit rate, the larger the file, but the better quality it is as well. And you can also choose high quality settings like 4K and 1080p there, which again will give you a larger file, but better quality. I would still recommend defaulting to H.264, although you still have H.265 as an option and some audio formats like AIFF, MP3, and Waveform Audio. You can also choose to automatically publish the finished video file to social networks like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and more. Turning that on, you can actually choose to log in to your YouTube channel here and it will upload it as a draft right from Premiere. Now, if you want more control over your video export settings, just like Final Cut has Compressor, Adobe Premiere has Adobe Media Encoder, which has many of the options, even more so than Compressor. Here in the bottom right corner, I can choose Send to Media Encoder. When I click that, you'll see my project now appears in Adobe Media Encoder right here. I can now choose a preset, and you'll see there's lots of other options here. Social network specific options, high quality, 
and matching source. I'm going to choose match source high bitrate, and then you can just click on this preset title, and now you're given even more options for your export. You can add effects like a camera LUT or lookup table just like in Compressor, change the image overlay and names, but let's jump over to the video tab. Again, like Compressor, you can choose to match the resolution of the video or uncheck this box and force a resolution like 920 by 1080, which is 1080p. It will automatically choose the settings from the project, which you probably want to leave those on automatic. Performance, hardware or software encoding, you can let Media Encoder decide what to do there. But let's scroll down to bitrate settings. Like we had in Compressor, you can choose one or two pass. Again, two pass will take longer to export, but you might get slightly higher quality, so you can choose that. And target bitrate, this is in megabits per second instead of kilobits per second. I did 15,000 kilobits per second. For high quality here in Adobe Media Encoder, I can choose 10 megabits per second. And that'll still give me a very high quality video file that's not too big. I can still share it and upload it. You have audio settings available to you, just like in Compressor. I will leave it on AAC as default. Sample rate 4800 kilohertz. You can choose to force the project into mono or stereo or even 5.1 surround. And you can choose your audio bitrate as well. Remember, higher number, higher quality. You can leave the multiplexer options as they are. Captions, you have the ability to upload an SRT file and include those captions. And like in Premiere, you can actually publish to social media services automatically like Vimeo and YouTube, signing into your account, and it will send this project to those services automatically. You can then choose to save this preset. You can save effects and publish settings if you always want to upload to Vimeo or YouTube from this preset. Click OK. And now this preset is available to you anytime you bring a project into Media Encoder and you can reuse it every time. So those are some tips on exporting your video from Final Cut and Compressor and Adobe Premiere and Adobe Media Encoder. If you have any questions about our advanced workflows, drop a comment below and check out the playlist we left in the video description. We have videos on color grading and LUTs, fixing bad audio and audio repair using EQ and Compressor and a ton more. Then subscribe to the Riverside channel and hit that bell icon because we have content on podcasting, video switchers, audio interfaces, and a ton more. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.